Hello guys, welcome back to another Coffee Time with Cobra and today we have a nice Nicaraguan dark roast you can almost smell the poverty taste of freedom, giggity oh, oh my god, where do I begin, where do I begin um, I recently got papers uh, for my medical condition. I actually have to go through these with uh, my daughter because it's a family history thing. We, we just need to go over certain things to make sure that uh, the things that are wrong with me aren't, um, that they're not uh, heretical or hereter her whatever the word is. It runs in the family, pretty much. Um, so we got that. And what else have we got going on? Um... I'm back into miniature painting. Um, my table is a complete mess. I've got a ton of models that, have all, that are all primed and getting ready for their base coats and whatnot. I will be going live later on today doing a paint stream. So that will be fun. Uh, what else? Eek. Eek. Let's see. Um... I've decided to try a new uh, diet system. Uh, of course, don't forget, guys, get your merch. Links will be in the description down below. But, uh, yeah, my new diet system is uh, no dairy and no sugar. Uh, so I am... Uh, also, I'm cutting down on my meat intake. Doesn't mean I'm going vegan or vegetarian. Relax. Relax. I still love my sausages. I still love my pork chops. I still love my chicken and, and whatnot and my beef. It's just I've decided to cut down my meat intake from it being pretty much every other meal or every meal to like maybe one meal out of three. Um, so basically what that means is I'm also getting into a lot of stews and whatnot, like a lot more um, vegetable based uh, diet. Um, does it, again, not going hard before or anything else. I'm still adding meat and whatnot, but it's called an ancestral diet. What that means is um, back in the day before we had refrigerators or whatnot, um, if we got meat, it was mostly because we killed something that day and we didn't want that meat to go spoil. So we cooked it all up, had a banquet, had a meal, had fun kind of thing. But we mostly lived off of fruits, vegetables, nuts, um, and small grouse, small meats, pigeons, things of that nature, small, small animals, rabbits, uh, uh, things of that nature. And so, like I said, meat was primarily not a mandatory within our diets. So I'm kind of pseudo going back to my ancestral roots, uh, or it's known as an ancestral diet, which basically means every meal I have is predominantly vegetables. Um, so I've got my, my crock pot out, and I've been cooking up a whole bunch of stews and whatnot. And I recently did a uh, mixed veggie stew with fish, because uh, I had some leftover fish from when I went fishing with some friends. And man, it is yummy. Uh, we I'm actually even grub we will in my back garden that I've got here at this place. Uh, one of my roommates, he's a bit of a green thumb, a bit of a horticulturist, if you will. And um, so we've got avocados growing. Not that we're actually going to see any avocados because we're most likely going to be moving out this place before those trees have fully bloomed. But point is, we've got avocados growing, uh, tomatoes growing, blackberries growing, carrots. Uh, tomatoes, um, carrots, tomatoes, we're working on potatoes, and a whole bunch of other stuff. We're literally trying to start growing our own veggies because the cost of living crisis is getting to the point where it's just more easier if we just uh, uh, grow our own veggies. Um, plus the fact that you can actually start by, if you go shopping at, like, say, Morrison's or, or, or me, me, I shop at Aldi's, uh, if you shop at Aldi's, pick up some of the veggies, you know, and when you cut the heads off the carrot, put it in the ground, you know, or, or, or you, you just, you, long story short, buy a book on homesteading, okay? Just buy a freaking book on homesteading. Learn it, cover to cover. That's actually one of the books I'm currently listening to as an audiobook on my phone, but I actually want to get an actual physical hard copy of the uh, book, same as my um, cybersecurity books and stuff. I've got the majority of those as um, Kindles, and whatnot, but I really want, I prefer a real paper book, you know, where you can smack someone with it if they really annoy you, um, not that I suggest you hit people, of course, but, um, so, 
I have been incredibly busy doing my schooling to the point where my teacher um, has admitted that I'm so far advanced in his class that he wants me to take the, the, the next class up, which starts, I think, in like two weeks. Um, so he's actually trying to speed expedite my um, tests so that I can actually get out of his class and go the next one up, which means I technically will be in the higher advanced tier. Uh, so that's good. And I actually have something simple as a Raspberry Pi and a Ponogotchi to thank. Uh, oh, sadly, our Rikio, she died. Our Ponogotchi died. Um, she started having a lot of uh, updating issues, um, ingest issues, and eventually I found out that uh, it's, not a hard, it's not the hardware. It's not my, my, my Raspberry Pi or anything. Uh, it's just the software. Uh, apparently, um, the Ponogotchi uh, uh, update build, whatever you want to call it, has not really pseudo been updated at all in almost four years. It's pretty old by now, and even the developer who probably did the original one has decided to just like wash his hands of it, um, which is a shame because it's such a real cool little project that you can do with kids in school that are learning, you know, electronics things of that nature. Plus, pies are actually coming down in price now, which is Christ, um, because of the chip shortage. Well, pies have gotten down in price. I now have a Raspberry Pi 3. It's in here. Uh, as you guys know, this is my... Uh, I'm, turning, I'm turning this into my own personal VPN slash router uh, so that I can stay anonymous uh, while I'm online. Uh, but most importantly, uh, I want to build my own WRT router. Uh, the reason why I want to build my own router is because genuinely I want to stay secure. I want my ISP to stop spying on me. I want my government to stop spying on me. I want to just be free. End of. I just want to be free. I just want to do me. And so, plus, these little projects, okay? And I know you don't think about it, guys, but these little projects, you can put on your resume. Think about it. You need to do Python. You need to learn uh, Putty. You need to learn you know numpty you'd need to learn a lot of skills just to get these things to work even if you're just following a youtube video instruction you still have to show you're showing the world that you can learn this okay this is why i say to people okay i i want to put these together as little kits like you get the battery pack you get the cable you you get a pie you get the screen and you know you can you, you can build these you know to show, to show yourself, and to, to prove to yourself and to show to others, especially potential employers, that you can do this. Okay? And so I've got this. I've got my Pi. Uh, in fact, I have several different uh, OSs on these SD cards. Uh, this one is Kali Linux um, for home internal networks because I've noticed that my Alexa has been acting up. I think someone has been um, doing some nefarious things. It is a used Alexa, so I haven't you know I'll, I'll go through it and see again this is another thing a lot of people don't seem to understand this um when it comes to cyber security guys i since i lost my money since someone robbed me of my money i've become very cyber security aware very cyber aware as they call it and um so i have been going out of my way to reinforce my uh cyber security things of that nature i'm currently working on designing my own um firewall hard hardcore firewall using a raspberry pi uh should be a pi 4 because uh, the pi 4 has both wireless as well as wired pi 3 doesn't so yes i'm in the market for a, a raspberry pi 4 uh i am also looking at other uh pi similar things not arduinos arduinos you have to code the actual micro code and whatnot so that's good if you want to get into coding get yourself an arduino seriously get yourself an arduino if you want to get into coding you want to get into networking and hot hacking and and defensive stuff and stuff what not get yourself a raspberry pi linux pi go for it i recently also had an issue with my teacher uh, my teacher gave us a uh, file a malicious file and it disabled the wi-fi on all of our laptops and the test was to try and get the file off of our network, get our Wi-Fi back up and running again, and to locate that file, reverse engineer the file, 
reverse engineer how and why it did it and try and track down through the file through, through the actual you know whatnot and and, and it was a fun little it, it, it's not technically a capture the flag event capture the flag events aren't like in call of duty or whatnot where you got this says one flag and one of your team has to grab it and get it back to base something similar to that but it's hacking groups uh you can be an individual person like myself or you can be in a group and there is one file in particular or one flag in particular and you have to hack into this one computer to get the file and prove that you have the file See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? Anyway, so there's one, there's this one network that has a file on there that you need, and you have to get in, get it, prove that you got it, shown how you got it, get past any honey pots and, and, and trap pitfalls and traps, and, and, and get past their, their firewalls and, and, and various other things and whatnot. And it's actually quite fun. Um, if you can, just go. You don't have to participate, just go. And you'll see what I'm talking about. You learn so much just through osmosis. I'm, I'm not even kidding. Find out where your nearest hacker space is and ask them if they do any capture the flags. And if they do, just go. Go go for support. You know? Just go for a moral support kind of thing. And just explain to them that you're new to this all, you want to learn, and the only way you're going to learn is by watching, by doing, and, and various other things. One of them might even stand up and say, take my terminal. You sit there, you understand, is, you know, is he using ParaOS, is he using Linux, is he, wh what is he using? You know, is he using a complete build-up from Debian? Uh, he could be using Mint, you know, just not Fedora or Red Hat. It's like, what's wrong with you? Or, oh God, or even Break. <laughs> Point is, you know, you get what I'm saying. You can then understand what's the difference between those. They are, they, are, they are technically a Linux operating system, but what is the true difference between the two? Everyone knows that Kali and, and Para are designed for cyber security slash cyber hacking. Okay, that's their, their core job. In order for you to be good at your job, you have to think like the enemy. How do you do that? You use their tools. End of. You use their tools. So there's that. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, my laptop. Um, it's it, it's okay my this is the thing i'm at the point where i need to start going to the actual university itself the hard university i have to go to university of reading you all know i live in reading it's not not a hidden secret i live in reading so it's getting to the point where i have to physically go on campus uh, i've been doing everything i can not to go on campus if you don't know i suffer from agoraphobia um that's what this paperwork's for this paperwork is to diagnose my ptsd my adhd and my agoraphobia so i hate being outside i hate being around people i do i cannot stand people i i if, if there's more than three people in a room i start to get nervous now that's not me the old me i would go to the pub i'd go to clubs i'd i would go out and have fun i'd be a very social butterfly after the lockdown my brain has just gone <clears throat> nope so it's kind of like a um What's the word I'm looking for? Um, hmm. It's kind of like reverse Stockholm syndrome. If that well, it, it is technically Stockholm syndrome, but my I'm my own kidnapper. So there you go. Um, and I, what I my plans are either to the point where I have to move out of here because I just don't have the room here i need i need my own place and that's the thing i do need my own place um i'm running out of space um and the majority of my stuff is for school um i've now moved this computer from the old desk to a separate desk where i didn't have space even for this desk i had to make space for this desk um that's why there's always stuff piled up behind me everyone keeps asking why don't you clean your place i can't this place is barely 300 meters square no not even that it's probably 20 it's about 50 meters square total that's it i'm not even joking and the way this room's layout with the the angles of the roof because i'm i literally live in a roof i've got no walls i've got no shelf space to put stuff up that's the only shelf i've got that's the only 
shelf I've got. Do you understand? I have no room. So this is why I'm doing cybersecurity, so that I can find a job that's remote and all that other stuff. I can move anywhere else in the country to, to, to where it's a more cost of living easier for me. Hell, I may even stay here for a while, work, get some money under my belt, and have enough for a mortgage and buy my own home. You have no idea how powerful that word is to me, buying my own home. Because that was my goal until some dirty bastard stole my money. I was trying to save up the full amount. I don't want a mortgage. I don't want that fear of someone coming up and just saying, you missed a payment, we're taking your house. And being homeless. I don't want that. And the home I had my eye on was a three bedroom just outside of Newcastle. And it was 40, no, is it a 48? It was 48 thou to 53 thou, floating between those two price points. And I could have got a mortgage for the full 50 thou, but I don't want to run the risk of losing it, if that makes sense. And so I just started saving up my money. I started investing it in Bitcoin and coin tossing. If you don't know what that is, that's where I explained it briefly in, in a previous video. It's where you take the three major currencies, the US dollar, the British pound and the euro, and you look at what is stronger and what is weaker. It's usually in a, a, on a bell curve or an incline. And you think to yourself, okay, so today the British pound is stronger against the euro and the dollar. So you keep the pound. But the moment you see it start to shift, i.e. one go higher than the other, you you can either jump ship beforehand. You, you, it, go, it, it goes in patterns and waves. If you, if you actually pay attention, look at the data and have a good enough uh, uh, AI or bot or whatever... Which you can get. You can get bots that, that will flip. That's why they're called coin flippers. They will literally start flipping currency for you. It will go from British pound to US dollar. They, they flip it on the fly. At any point, there's a chance that you can get more than a 3% return. It sells. Or it will hold. Sell. Hold. Sell. Hold. Sell. Hold. Buy. You see what I'm saying? It buys it, buys it below 5% and then it sells at 3%. So you've got a 2% margin of error. You could adjust it to be 1% and 1%, which is what mine was at, which means I wasn't making anywhere near as much as what some people are, because they, they adjust it to like fucking 50-50. I'm serious. They wait for it to for a one coin to drop, drop completely like, through the fucking, like, through its ass, and then scoop that shit up, hold on to it, and then wait for it to get even 50% higher than where it was at, and then sell it. And you could, again, you could do that. that that's called sifting. That, that's in an AI algorithm, al algorithmic term, that's called sifting. Um, you could do that. I don't. Um, like I said, I, I did a majority coin flip stuff, which is basically a 3% return uh, uh, annually, which was good for me. For So I invested, I think I invested, I think it was like 200 or 300 pounds at the beginning. And by the end of it, at the end of the year, I was up to 900 With a max investment on anything was over, was at 300 so it would take 300 of that nine, invest it, get the return, another 300, get a return. No, and it will adjust the 300 floating on a 3% increase. So basically what that means is I've got 300 pounds. I hold on to it. I start coin flipping. I've made 3% on top. So I've got what, three, uh, 330 quid. Okay, about that. Massive really getting my strong point at this point. Uh, my brain isn't even fully functioning yet. I mean, it's barely 7.30 in the morning, so let me get my coffee. Anyway, it's a long-term investment. You, you can do it short-term at high-risk return, or you can do low-risk return at long-term. Does that make sense? Shorter it is, the higher your risk factor, the higher your return factor, or the longer you go, the lower your risk, the lower your return. I always went for the longer. So you can do it in increments of, of daily, which is what most day trade. Oh, I buy, I sell, I sell. That's they're the ones that end up dying off a heart attack by the time they're even 40. I, like I said, I let my money. If you leave your money in a bank, you're an idiot. Okay, you're an idiot. Do not put your money in a savings account. You're an idiot. If you are, you are a fucking idiot. 
reason why is because that money okay technically it is yours it's right there you see your name savings but the moment you try to take money out of your savings notice how all of a sudden the bank's like hang on uh, 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 hang on there mr cobra uh, it's going to take 24 hours for that transfer to go through you want to know why the bank is scrambling to get your money because when you put money into a savings account you are legally allowing that bank to float your your money into stocks bonds and shares which means they themselves have to start fucking finding out a way to sell it grab it scrape the bottom of the barrel to take that money to put it back into your account for you to take it out and use it this is why banks always are starting to get more fucking nosy than I am with a cocaine addiction. Because they want to know what you're spending your money on. It has nothing to do with what they want. That's superfluous. The reason why it's superfluous, the actual reason, is the fact that they don't have your money anymore. Okay? This is why banks are trying to go digital. Because that way they can just go into their ledger, type some zeros. Oh, look, here's your money. <laughs> Spend. Have fun. It's not going to speed up transfers. Okay. Like I said, have you ever noticed that when you owe someone money, the bank will take it instantly. But when they owe you money, they take up to three to seven working days. That's not how that works. If you can take it instantly from me, you can give it back to me instantly. Because remember, that's how it works. You know? I look like a fucking 90s raver there for a second. But that's my whole point. No one ever asks. Because you're all sheep. And that's the schooling system to blame. How many times have you sat there as an adult and said, why didn't school teach me about compound interest? Why didn't school teach me about mortgage rates? Why didn't school teach me about uh, quantitative easing? And that's another dirty word. If you go to your bank and say quantitative easing, you can literally hear their sphincters tighten up. Your bank manager will start fucking sweating blood. He's that worried. Do not mention the word quantitative easing to your mathematics teacher or your home economics teacher because they will kick you out of the class. Because you will be marked as a problem person. By the way, quantitative easing is the legal term that banks use to go printer, go burr, and fuck your economy. Because that's exactly what the Biden administration did. Print the <laughs> And look where the US economy is at now. Shit city in California. Tent city. Shit city. Unemployment through the roof. Companies shutting down. Signs up saying, you know, we'll, we'll hire a burger flipper for $35 an hour. Why? When your $35 won't buy you shit. You're not getting it, are you? Just because you're saying, that, oh yeah, I will pay you $100 an hour. Okay, great. Okay, cool. But if a milkshake costs me 15 bucks, instead of, what, $3 back in the day for a Yoohoo? Are you, are you starting to understand what I'm talking about? They keep saying, okay, if we keep having to up your wage, we're going to have to keep... Why? Because you're being greedy and it's about profits. Again, they want to take all the profits and keep a hold of it. <laughs> they they want to be Gollum. They want to be they they want to be Smog. They want to be the dragon that has all the fucking gold and everything. <laughs> my, 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 my. You can't take it with you, moron. Say same as bank managers, like, like, like CEOs of companies that make twenty million a year. Why? Do you do actually any work? Do you work the floor and make the sales? No, the sales people do. I.e., let's take a look at the Best Buy issue right now. The whole, white people can't work for us. <sighs> do not make me get a hold of the Dark Army. Yes, that is a Mr. Robot reference. Do not make me get a hold of F Society. Okay? Because that's my whole point. Okay? All you do is sit in a cushy air-conditioned office. Angela, cancel my three o'clock. I'm going to go get a pet here. That's all you do. That's all you do. You didn't make a single ever fucking sale in your life. You've never worked the fucking floor in your life. You've never done stock intake in your life. You, you, you don't know, woman. You don't know. And you think that, oh, 
oh, I'm only earning 20 million a year, that's not enough. What kind of fucking vice habits do you have where 20 million is not enough? Oh, you've got to have a Birkins bag every fucking new Birkin ba Birkins bag every fucking day? Go work for Birkins. I still have the same fucking wallet. No joke. I still have the same fucking wallet I've had since I was 21. Hello, that's me. Same wallet. Look at it. Perfectly fine. No money in it. But the point is, it works perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with it. Same wallet. Works perfectly fine. Why would I need a new wallet every other fucking day? Stop going broke pretending to be rich. Do you understand what that means? You want to know why rich people don't wear don't don't wear Versace and Birkins and all this other shit and are dripping in gold like they're Mr. Fucking T? Don't go broke pretending to look rich. Low profile. They keep a low profile. You want to know another thing rich people do? Bear in mind, there's rich. Okay, there's rich. And then there's wealthy. They're two different fucking kettles of fish. Rich is your shit can be gone with one email or you spending more than six months in prison. Wealthy is their great 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 ten years later great 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 grandchildren are still set for life. That's the fucking difference. And what actually what turns a rich person wealthy? Education, understanding, and following just three simple basic fucking rules. One, don't go broke pretending to be rich. Keep a fucking low profile. No social media. There you go. In that order. Boop, boop, boop. What's the one thing rappers always do? The complete opposite. And what happens to them? They go broke. They go broke or they die trying. Quote, unquote, influencers. They break all three of those rules right there. And look at them. Where are they now? Where are they now? Don't care. I couldn't give a shit about PewDiePie, Mr. Beast, Little Tay Tay, whoever the fuck that is. Um, I, I don't care. I don't care. You're not worth two drips of piss at the tip of my dick. Don't care. Could not give a fuck about your thoughts and ideas on politics, on this, on that, on anything. You want to know why? You mean nothing to me. Like, I mean nothing to you, whoever's watching this video. And you want to know why? You want to know why? Because I have not given anything, any substance of worth. Okay? Someone like Thomas Sowell, substance of worth. Martin Luther King, substance of worth. JFK, something of worth. Malcolm X, something of worth. Yes, I've just listed three black men and a white man. Does that make me racist? The fact that I've listed more, white pe uh, more black people than white people? No. Okay? One of my favorite comedians. Okay, one of my favorite comedians okay i love cat williams he's up there he's in my top three he's my top in my top three comedians because i i love cat williams he makes me laugh but there's eddie griffith eddie griffith is 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 literally number one okay and eddie griffith turned around and said christians say that jesus is the messenger muslims say that muhammad is the messenger i don't care who the fucking messenger is did you get the damn message same principle okay martin luther king turned around and said judge a person by the content of their character not by the color of their skin that's what i do i don't care if you're black brown fucking any color of the rainbow don't care don't care what i care about is how you treat me what i care about is how you respect other people what i care about is how you treat your surrounding environment if you're a nice person and you are nice to other people, I will be nice to you. Do one to others as others do one to you. Do you understand how that works? It's in the Bible. It's in the Quran. It is in even the first and old and new testament. Do you understand that principle? 
that's what I firmly believe in in my Christianity. Do I push Christianity on other people? Absolutely not. Do I pray every night? Depends on how my day has been. If I've had a hard day, yes, I will pray. I will pray and say thank you for giving me the strength, the courage, the will, and, and, and the fundamental understanding to see this day through. Thank you. But I don't force my religion on other people. When I give myself, when I count my blessings, when I'm having my, my, my meal of the day, when I say my Lord's Prayer, you know, Lord, bless this, bless this bountiful meal for we, in your name. Bless this bountiful meal that we have prepared for you in your name. And Lord Jesus, amen. I don't I have other people joining on me. That's my personal prayer that I say in my head. To God. To the unit, to the, to the entity that people have called God, Yahweh, uh, uh, whatever you want to call them. Gaia. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. That's me having a moment with my elders. And I even turn around, sometimes I'll even turn around and say, thank you elders who are past and present, who are still with me on this moment, who are giving me the courage, the strength, and the willingness to, to perceive and proceed this weathering storm that's coming my way. That includes my father. In many retrospects, I, I don't even, and this thing, Christians won't call me a Christian because I believe in what's called forefathers, forefatherism. They talk in the Bible and various other religious books, texts, that your your ancestors are the ones that made all the sacrifices for you. So you are in a privileged position. I'm just acknowledging it when I say thank you forefathers for this privilege that I have today. The privilege of wearing a mixed blend t-shirt. A privilege for talking to you using electricity with a microphone. On a computer, on the internet. Do you see what I'm saying? Everything that you see around you if you go back a minimum of a, a, a maybe not even a hundred years, you know, if you go back 50, 60, 70 years, okay, like 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 World War Two, if you can the fact, okay, the fact that my fucking Raspberry Pi, okay, my Raspberry Pi had more computing knowledge than the entire onboard computer on the first Apollo mission to the moon. This did. This does. My phone, my phone would be more powerful enough to crack the Enigma code set by the Germans in World War II that took quite literally Alan Turing damn near most of his fucking life and constant arguing to, 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 to get the British government to, to acknowledge that computers are the only way you're going to crack it. Yes, I know Alan Turing. What happened to him was a disgrace. I don't care your sexuality. I'm bisexual personally myself. I don't care your sexuality. Everyone keeps asking me about that. <laughs> That's another thing. Everyone keeps asking me about my sexuality. So here you go. I'm bisexual. Okay. I like women and dudes. I'm greedy. <laughs> I'm greedy. There you go. I'm greedy. Um, so please understand this. Okay. You need to educate yourself. Read about topics that make you feel uncomfortable. Read. Look at things from the perspective of your enemy. If you're a Democrat, look at things from the lens of a, of a Republican in a respectful way. Don't say, oh, you're a Trump murder. <laughs> Redneck. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is sit down, okay, across the table not from uh, not from another Republican, not from a Republican or a Democrat, but just from a friend, and ask them, "Who do you think abolished slavery? The Republicans or the Democrats? Who do you yeah, just general information that you can pull up on Wikipedia? Not even well, technically Wikipedia, but you can just pull up even read history books." Thomas Sowell, pick up a Thomas Soul book. Go to your public library and pick up a copy of one of Thomas Sowell's books. There's one called uh, The White N-Word and The Black Redneck. See, I won't even say that word. Do you understand? Because I know that that word, words can hurt. 
Do you understand? And I get that. Words do hurt, can hurt your feelings. And feelings can eventually cause physical harm to yourself. Not technically. I mean, if I said the word gun, you haven't been shot, you know, or bang, you haven't been shot. But I'm just saying there are some words that, that strike people down to the core. OK, like saying the R word around someone who has Down syndrome or the N word around one of your your darker skinned friends. Notice I don't even say I'm not going to I'm not going to go that route. OK, or, or, or you know, I'll, I'll say it in a better, more scientific term, a darker, a more melatonin skin content. How about that? There you go. Better. That's more appropriate. That's that's more. The, the the right word okay and know this and just 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 know this and understand this okay if you do not see things from your fellow man other fellow man's perspective especially if they have a counterpoint to you don't just clam up don't just shut down don't just say i'm right you're wrong my god's dick's bigger than yours because that's going to get nowhere some people, like Saddam Hussein, Adolf Hitler, everyone keeps asking, how did such an evil person get into power? Divide and conquer. That is how. If they keep you too busy fighting each other, if you're constantly divided, it is a lot easier for them to conquer you. Stop. Just, just stop hating someone because... They think differently from you, or they love someone different from you, or their skin is different from you, or their religion is different from you. Okay? It's not hard, guys. It really isn't. My daughter is mixed race. I'm technically mixed race. I didn't even know I was mixed race until my grandmother passed away. My mother is half English, half Israeli Jew. I did not know this. I thought my mum, I, I thought my grandfather on my mother's side was French Canadian because he came over from Canada in World War Two. But no, apparently his family's originally from his family's originally from Israel. They left Israel, fled to Canada. Canada started their draft, pinched him. He flew over to the UK, met my grandmother, had my mother. Do you understand? I didn't even know I was mixed race. Do I look mixed race? No. People just say, oh, it's another white, white cracker. Actually, no. I'm not, actually. Sorry. My father, 100% Irish. Mum, 25% <laughs> Irish, 25% English, 50% Israeli Jew. <laughs> is what it is. <laughs> And that's what makes me. Um, now, I, I, I want to point something out that a lot of people don't seem to understand. Okay, they, 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 some of my friends love being around me until I get to um very philosophical and start wanting to talk and and, and stuff, like that. and then they like, they get very uncomfortable because I make them question everything they've ever been taught. just like you you should question everything you've been taught and don't just oh oh trust the science when they turn around and say we are the science we can make the science whatever we want why would i trust that you said it yourselves we control the science and then you get mouthpieces like Ouchie Fauci that says, Just trust me, I'm the science. I'm the science guy. It's what I do. N no. No, sir. That is not what you do. You are a bureaucrat. You are a liar. You are a con man. You are a thief. You are narcissistic. And you need your head caved in, metaphorically. He needs to be examined by Nietzsche. Oh, that would be interesting. <laughs> if Nietzsche managed to get his hands on him. <laughs> now, if you don't know who that is, Nietzsche was a, a German philosopher. Uh, really, 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 way before his time. Um, and, and that's my whole point. Okay, guys. 
Think outside the box. Pick up a subject that makes you feel uncomfortable. Seriously, sometimes you've got to hug the cactus. Sometimes you've got to hug the cactus. I know so many people who voted Democrat. My ex-wife being one of them. They're all now voting Republican. And it has nothing to do with anything I've said. All I did was tell them, do some research. Read. I mean, for crying out loud, the current sitting United States president, okay, Joseph Biden, he has more origin stories than Superman in the multiverse. He's originally from Wales. His father was a miner. No, that's Neil Kinnock. He's originally from Ireland. No. You're from Delaware. Bumblefuck. Middle of nowhere. Delaware. Your father was a nobody. Your children are nobodies. You tried to be a somebody. You got caught with your hand in the cookie jar. You are more corrupt than a chaos cultist. You are more bent than a boomerang. And you are more on the take than cash money. And your house of cards is starting to collapse. And there's fuck all you can do about it. And the more the DNC keep propping you up, the DNC are not looking down at where their feet are at. Because if they did, they'd realize that the people that put them in power, the people that voted them in, are going to be voting them out come next election. And so they're trying to fucking destroy what is left of the system. And it is a shame. See, I was having a conversation with someone, with um, Red, one of my partners. And... I pointed out to her, it's amazing how US politicians, or any government politician, as far, I think as far as I know, they have what's known as a zero-sum retirement package, which means if you're a working-class person like myself, whatever, and you look at your paycheck, you'll get taxed for working. They call that your, in, your, your retirement plan. Okay, okay, my retirement plan, right, but if you look at a politician's tax returns, they're not taxed for that, because they have a zero, a zero add-in rate, which means they don't put into their retirement package, but they still get a retirement package, because you are putting in their retirement package, you are. I am. Everyone else is. You want to know why it's amazing how a lot of people die before they get to the age of retirement and can actually use their retirement and why the federal government still owes every US citizen like ridiculously millions of dollars because they raided the social security uh, uh, bank, bank uh, 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 coffers years ago and haven't paid it back and keep forgetting to pay it back? Seriously. Do some research. Russell Brand, uh, uh, um, whoever you want to add in here, uh, um, what's his name? The, um, Alex Jones. If if you guys want to do just a, some simple research, you will realize that the U.S. Treasury owes the people of the United States trillions because every time they're low in a certain budget. They raid the social the social security administration's coffers. They raid the retirement coffers. They raid all these other programs that you, the people, pay into. And they use that to pay for their programs. And then they say, oh, but now we're going to tax you on this. We're going to tax you on that. We're going to tax you on this. Why? Because you can't even make the bare minimum payment on what you already owe the people. You want to literally grab us by the ankles turn us around and then shake us and whatever falls out you keep you owe us we don't owe you 
Get it right. And let me make this abundantly clear. Tax under any representation is theft. You want to know why? Let me put it to you like this. Did your town have roads before you were born? Yeah? Okay. Have they made any new roads? No. Well, they added the M25. That's not what I said. Listen to what I said. Was there a road when you were born? Yes. Have they made any new roads? No. Why? Because we've discovered no new lands. Right? Yet, they'll say, oh, it's to maintain the roads. So why does the tax keep going up if you're not building any new roads? That's a little breadcrumb for you. Just follow... Follow the white rabbit. Okay, seriously, Neo. Follow the white rabbit. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. The government is not in the business of making money. The government is in the business of spending money. Your money. That's it. The fact that when Donald Trump was in power and he started to run the US like a business and it was making money, notice that taxes were down. Cost of living was down. You could afford a house. You could afford a car. Stop running a government like a government. Run a fucking government like a business and it makes money which means you can then put the burden not on the people but on the leaders see again let me explain something what is the premise of leadership what does leadership mean leadership means to take accountability when shit goes wrong leadership means to take responsibility when things go right notice that no fucking leader has willingly stepped up and said, I fucked up on COVID. Or I fucked up on whatever it is. They're all quick to take praise when a hero cop stops a mad gunman. You know, everyone all of a sudden becomes Don King. You know, or... or, or uh, or, or, or insert your favorite star here but yet when shit goes sideways they will blame everyone else but themselves and the fucking decisions that they made that's not leadership if you're good enough to take the praise be good enough to take the criticism and if you can't take the criticism and what comes with it step down that's a true leader. A leader leads by example. If you want better, be better. How more simpler can I say that? If you want better, be better. Thank you for my TED talk. My coffee is done. This has been a long one. Video's over.